What's up everybody, your boy Juan Valdez back with another video and today I'm actually going to be doing another book review How to Win Friends and Influence People Based on the feedback that I got from you guys I decided to go ahead and do another key takeaway video So what I did is I pretty much broke down the book um, so with some of the key takeaways that I personally got I want to start by saying that this book right here is like one of the best books for communication and networking for so for anyone that wants to get a lot better with communicating with other people that maybe you you know you're not the best at getting your point across or for those of you guys that want to network a lot more this is the book right here the way that the school system is set up is that obviously they make us read things that we're not interested in and that are super relevant to our lives so it makes us associate reading with pain right we don't look forward to reading because it's boring and it has nothing to do with anything you want to learn about when it comes down to you know obviously business and entrepreneurship and all that great stuff books is a tremendous shortcut bottom line i was actually watching a warren buffett documentary on my flight here from boston and it was honestly super powerful warren buffett one of the biggest advantages that he had over a lot of other people is the amount of time that he spent reading every single day he reads about six to eight hours a day obviously that's a little excessive some of you guys watching probably don't read you know six to eight hours i definitely don't read six to eight hours but that's what got the man where he is today so it, it's like a fact right all the billionaires we all look up to all the most successful people in the world they all read for those of you guys that are bringing up to my channel welcome on over to the v fam the v fam is a family and a community of individuals that are striving to do a lot more than what society is out for us to do and one of those things for a fact is reading right when everybody else is you know not reading we're doing it if you guys want to see Again, a lot more videos like this where I'm doing key takeaways. Make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video. If you have any questions along the way, drop them in the comments below. And of course, I'll get back to you guys. If you guys haven't already, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Join the VFAM. All right, so for the first part of the book goes over techniques you can use to handle people, right? One of the first ones that I picked up from them is when you see somebody doing something wrong, not criticizing them on it. And that's a huge mistake that a lot of us make. It's just natural, it's second nature. Another technique and when it comes to handling people is you wanna give people, when they do something right, give them honest and sincere appreciation, right? People know when you say like, give someone like a compliment, make sure the compliment is actually congruent to what it is that they're doing. You're not just saying like a bland statement to kind of give them the compliment, make them feel good, right? Because people know when you're being real and when you're not. That was a key takeaway that I got from it. Uh, six ways to make people like you. I honestly thought this was huge. These same techniques that I got here from this book, I actually use them in door-to-door -door sales and that's actually how I was able to get really good at door-to-door -door sales because for me personally, I'm more of an introverted person. So for me, like, you know, talking to people is already like completely out of my comfort zone. Getting people to like me is definitely out of my comfort zone because I'm used to not even talking to as much people. For those of you guys that are introverted, you can use these same skill sets to become a lot more extroverted and, you know, connect and, you know, really get more people to like you, right? So one of the ways you can do that is by, you know, just becoming genuinely interested in other people, right? So when you go out there, you know, obviously one of the ways you can connect with other people is like ask them, you know, what they do, things like that. But when that happens, you want to make sure you're not just being bland again. You're not just asking like, what do you do for work? And then like switching over to another topic because that's going to let them know that you're not genuinely interested. One of the things you always want to do is, you know, obviously ask them what they do, but get into a lot more details. Ask about, you know, what got them into that, you know, and a whole lot more. So that was one of the key takeaways I got. Of course, smiling. Nobody ever gets upset by a smile, right? Mm. <laughs> um, nobody ever gets upset with that. So that's one of the ways you can definitely do it. Uh, one of this is actually huge. You want to make sure that you remember the person's name. People love hearing, you know, their name being said automatically, right? If you think about it, whenever somebody says your name, you're like quick to respond. So of course, you know, remember somebody's name is obviously super important. So make sure you do that. I'm actually terrible at names, so this is super hard for for me personally. It's something that I really had to work on to, you know, really get down. Uh, the next one is you want to be a good listener, right? And uh, you want to make sure that you encourage people to talk more about themselves because let's be honest, who hates talking about themselves, right? We're all interested in ourselves all the time. So when you're trying to connect with someone, trying to get them to like you, you know, get them to talk about themselves, right? They're going to get a lot more comfortable with you. And obviously one of the best ways to, you know, to meet new people and to just, you know, build your network is to get more people to like you. So of course, this is an easy way you can, you know, you can start getting someone to like you. You want to talk in the other person's interest. If you don't know what they're interested in, of course, you're going to have to ask. But if you know what they're interested in, this is an easy way to connect with someone. For example, 
one of the things that I do whenever I was going to my first few um, business events is I would ask people, you know, what they're working on, what do they want to work on, and a whole lot more because I know for a fact they're there specifically for business. So I know that I can ask them all business projects and potential things that they want to work on because that's the reason why they're there because they're obviously they want to improve in their business and a whole lot more. So there's some of these things, again, you won't be able to do every single time, but you you know, you want to try your best to try to do these whenever you want to meet new people and a whole lot more because, again, it's an easy way to make people, you know, obviously talk to you, like you, and, of course, the easy way to build relationships. So the other per the other last one is on this part is to make the other person feel important. And, again, you want to make do that sincerely, right? You want to let them know when you're talking to them. You want to obviously give them the respect that they require when they're talking. Don't interrupt them, do things like that, you know, because, obviously, you want to, show people the respect that you want to get so of course what better way to do that than to you give them the respect first and obviously you usually get that respect back whenever you want to win people to think or agree with your way of thinking there's some key things you want to do because it's a lot there's a lot better ways to do it than just to try to shove your idea down people's throats i was selling solar door to door right so i obviously i couldn't just tell people hey solar and renewable energy is a lot better than burning fossil fuels and carbon emissions I mean, obviously it is true that clean renewable energy is a lot better, but I couldn't just shove that down people's throats to make them go ahead and switch over to, you know, buy the product that I had. I had to find ways to make it engaging and find ways to actually make them understand why obviously uh, solar and renewable energy is a lot more effective than the old school method with fossil fuel fuels and carbon emissions that they're utilizing to get their power. Of course, one of the first things you want to do when trying to get people to Win them over for your idea and your, you know, your point of view on whatever it is that you want to get a point that you want to get across is make sure you try to avoid an argument at whatever it costs. Usually, arguments don't end up with them agreeing with your point of view almost all the time. So, if you can, of course, avoid the argument. You want to make sure that you definitely show respect to other people's opinions. Uh, one of the biggest rules I learned from one of my biggest mentors, Grant Cardone, is to basically, you know, never say no, right? Acknowledge the person's response and, you know, just let them know that you understand completely where they're coming from and then give them your point of view. You don't want to ever say, no, you're wrong. This is why. That doesn't, whenever, as soon as you say no to people and you're wrong, it's, it, you, you know, you kind of feel disrespected, right? Because obviously you got that information from somewhere and you felt it was important to get that across. So you definitely don't want to say no. One of the biggest things that we uh, tried to do whenever we were doing sales is really try to almost never say no to everybody. I always, always say, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, but also every single term that I could use to basically not say no, we would use and because we knew that we never wanted to say no to anyone and let them know that they were wrong, right? Instead, we wanted to show them, you know, another point of view, another perspective. So you want to try to honestly see other people's point of views because where we come from, usually when we have a point of view on one specific subject and it time the time comes to again listen to somebody else's point of view we usually don't even want to listen to their point of view and want to stick to what we know but there are tons of times where the other people the other person can have a valid point of view with like statistics and research and a whole lot more so you always want to be good at listening to other people's point of views because you never know when somebody else's approach can be a lot better than the approach that you had originally had you know in your mind right you never you always want to be open to other people's point of views because you never know you know where that point of view comes from and if that makes much more sense and if that point of view that they have may be like a specific marketing point of view that makes a lot more sense and can lead to like you making more sales or you know better conversions on your like e-commerce website that's why i'm always open to you hearing different people's per perspective when it comes to you know e-commerce marketing sales pretty much anything business related that's why i'm consistently going to different conferences events that's why i'm reading tons of different books because I always want to see different point, different people's point of views on different things, right? That's how obviously we can learn and we can see what works, test new things and a whole lot more. Otherwise, we would keep doing the same thing all the time and believe it's right even if it wasn't. So again, you want to stay open to other people's point of views. You want to talk about your own mistakes before criticizing somebody else. So for example, you know, when I was doing door-to-door -door sales and when we would have our sales meetings and one of the ways I would start off whenever I wanted to talk about the mistake that somebody else made was by simply going over some of the mistakes that I used to make when I was first getting started. For example, one of the mistakes I made at first when I was first getting started is disagreeing with people saying, no, you're wrong, you should get solar no matter what. 
that's a huge mistake. And people, some of the new guys that were starting obviously would make that mistake. So one of the ways you can criticize other people on their mistakes is by first talking about your own mistakes, then transitioning on to you know, the mistakes that they're making. And that makes it a lot easier for people to, again, relate to you, allow you to realize that you're just leading by that example because you made those mistakes and obviously you changed it. Improving from the mistakes that you have made is obviously the right thing to do. And so that allows you to be a leader and really lead by example, right? Because now, once they realize that you did the same thing that they did, you made that mistake, and obviously you changed it, and it became a lot better, and you got better results by doing it, it's a lot easier to learn from someone that you know that failed before and just simply changed it and got better results than, you know, simply, you know, getting someone saying like, no, no, you did this completely wrong and not really talking about how they also did it wrong, right? You can't really connect to that. You guys can keep these notes right here. These are literally some of the key takeaways. If you guys pick up the book, you'll see that these exact same things are in there. I just figured I kind of shortened the, you know, the notes that I had for you guys and some of the things I wanted to go over. If I wouldn't have mastered the skills that I learned from this book, first off, I wouldn't have met the people that I've met. I wouldn't have the network of people that I have around me. And honestly, I don't think I would have been here where I'm at today without learning the skills that it takes to really be an effective communicator and networker. Because again, you know, one of the biggest things that helped me was being able to communicate with people, right? Getting my message across, that helped me automatically make more money because again, I was able to sell people on the idea of why they should go solar. Even though not all of you guys have to sell people on solar, but you can use the same tactics with sales, right? Also, networking is super important, right? Being able to meet the right people can lead to a lot of different opportunities and connections as well. So again, if you guys want to master communication and networking, I recommend for you guys to pick this book up. If you guys want to see a lot more videos of me going over different books and you know keep relating them to real life situations just like how I did in this kind of key takeaway, make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video. If you guys have any questions about anything we went over, drop them in the comments below. I'm going to get back to you guys. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you smash that subscribe button, join the V fam, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.